Hey, 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 we're the Sharky. And people say we Sharky around. But I'm too busy singing to put anybody down. I'm Sharky. Clark the Shark at 1-800-449-8255 on the fabulous, amazing, the most incredible talk radio show all over Andromeda. That's right, you guys. I'm on the air now in Andromeda. They all took me off the air in the Milky Way because liberals uh, and Democrats run the Milky Way now. Galaxy. For those of you who don't got an Elon Musk degree in astrodynamics or quantum physics or whatever they call it at 1-800-449-8255 on the Clark the Shark Show. So over in Andromeda, they got some real cool, like, I don't know. I mean, Republicans or conservatives aren't real cool either. You know, they, they charge everyone 8000 a month to live in their buildings. And they're like, if you don't like it, you're a loser. Okay, you, a free market decides, Sharky. At 1-800-449-8255. And Democrats are like, yeah, we're on your side. We uh, just pay us money and we'll, uh, you know, get, just pay us more money and we'll, uh, we'll fix it. Sure you will. That's coming straight from the heart of the sharky. But, you know, you can't fix stupid. That's for darn sure. Right here from the golden EIB Sharkraphone where you're listening to Clark the Shark talk about Genesis, wind, and weathering. <laughs> 1976. Um, but I really think of this like 1977 for some reason. Of course, the great Genesis live album, Seconds Out, is from 1977. And then uh, Hackett would leave the band. Uh, crazy uh, situation there because Peter Gabriel uh, also left this band before, back in 74, 75, leaving Genesis in a real predicament where uh, there were just four guys and they had to patch it together quick with a new singer guy and they auditioned like a thousand guys and all the guys showed up dressed like Peter Gabriel or something. I don't know if all of them did, but a whole bunch of them did. They were all had Fox's heads and, you know, the slipper men outfit <laughs> and Genesis were like, we, we don't want another Peter Gabriel. We already had that. And he quit. So, uh, as we all know now, Phil, the very short, weird looking little drummer guy, he came forward and became the singer and he did it all with his singing voice because I mean, the guy is nothing to look at. We all know that. I mean, and it's not like over the years he ever improved. I mean, having Phil as your lead singer, that would be like having Greg Gutfeld as your lead singer. I mean, he better have a pretty damn good voice right here on the Clark the Shark Show at 1-800-449-8255. But anyway, Wind and Wuthering, this album from 1976, late 1976, this is one of two Genesis albums from 1976. Both of them had no Peter Gabriel. Now, we all know a trick of the tale from earlier in the year, 1976. That's an incredible album. I love a trick of the tale. Uh, it's just one of the most incredible Genesis albums. Very progressive, yet kind of commercial enough, you know, like without being too commercial. Now, this album here is similar, but it's a little different. Uh it leans a little more commercial, I'd say, than A Trick of the Tale.
But believe me, people, there is plenty of prog, proggy, progressive rock on this album that would make like Getty Lee and Alex Lifeson and uh, Chris Squire and John Anderson just like masturbate in glory. I mean, this album, Wind and Weathering, has a lot of technical prog, Tony Banks keyboards and you know, Steve Hackett is all over this album. He's just writing little bits and parts and intros and everyone is contributing here. Of course, Mike Rutherford, uh, the amazing bassist, but who later became a bassist and guitarist when Hackett left. Uh, but this album here really is the glorious moment of Steve Hackett. Uh, more than any other Genesis album. And it's really weird how he quit the band complaining that uh, he wasn't getting enough of his songwriting, uh, you know, or all the stuff like the intros and cool little sounds and just all the shit that he does. He was bitching that, you know, these guys aren't letting me contribute enough. And Phil and Tony and Rutherford were like, well, we do things as committee, you know, we don't. And I think Hackett was saying that. He's like, yeah, well, let's do a committee where I'm invited to the committee. <laughs> you know, it's a totally different reason from why Peter Gabriel left Genesis. But um, anyway, Wind and Weathering, to me, this is the final great, incredible prog Genesis album. Even though there's a couple of albums after this that are still really good. Uh, of course, and then there were three is where the band uh, really shortens the songs. They're very concise. And uh, that's really the debut of the commercial Genesis. That being said, it's still very prog and technical. And then the album Duke, uh, you know, it's got those lame Genesis Phil Collins songs all, all over it. And yet it has killer Tony Banks and Rutherford. Everyone's just jamming and shredding on Duke. And of course, the album Abacab is just crappy. But if you really listen to it, you might discover things in it. Uh, even me, Clark the Shark, as much as I hate Abacrap, uh, I guess it's from 1981. <laughs> I mean, that album got like a one word review. You remember Spinal Tap, Shark Sandwich. God, someone just said shit sandwich. <laughs> well, Abba, Abba Cab was just Abba crap. <laughs> I think Lester Bangs did that one. But anyway, Wind and Weathering. Let's be perfectly serious now. This is a killer album. Maybe not as good as I would have hoped and wished, uh, being it was the follow-up to the incredibly great A Trick of the Tail, which is one of my favorite albums ever recorded. I can't really say that Wind and Weathering is one of Clark the Shark's favorite albums ever, you know, but this album certainly is really good. And uh, there's parts of this album, as I listen to it, where I'm you know, kind of disappointed or something. And I'm kind of like, oh, shit, you know, this song, you know, this is crap. But then I'm still like, you know, overall, in general, this is pretty good as a whole, you know. And that's how I like to rate things. Now, Wind and Weathering is not uh, a lot of prog fans, you know, of Rush and Yes and Jethro Tull and all that, you know, Gentle Giant and Eloy and Emerson, Lake and Palmer. They look to this album as the last great Genesis album. And so, too, do I, Clark the Shark from the Golden EIB Sharkraphone, but only up to a point to a degree. I mean, I I like Genesis after this. For, for quite some time for a bit, I give them more than a chance because come on, you guys, Tony Banks and Rutherford, those two guys are the reason you love Genesis. But of course, you know, Hackett, you know, Steve, 
fucking Hackett, man, one of the greatest guitar players in all rock music history, certainly one of the best guys in Prague. And uh, if Tony Banks could only just lighten up on his complete control, you know, like su superiority kick that he's on and just sit down with or back in the day, if he could have sat down with Hackett and worked it out. Oh, the music Genesis might have made had Steve Hackett still remained in this fabulous band, Genesis. But we will never know now as he exited the band to never return like Peter Gabriel before him. Now, Peter Gabriel never really went with Genesis. He was like a solo artist in a band and Genesis were his backing group. Uh, who didn't go with him or his music at all. And the, that fact is what makes Genesis with Peter Gabriel so amazing, incredible, is that, uh, you know, it's apples and oranges and uh, Peter Gabriel's an orange and Genesis were apples. But somehow you put it all together and it was just incredible. It couldn't get any better for those five, six, seven albums they did with Peter Gabriel uh, it, you know, it's just the weirdest thing in rock, how it doesn't go and yet it goes perfectly. Now, Phil Collins comes along and he really doesn't go with this either, but in a totally different way. And yet it all works and it all goes, baby. Uh, it's interesting, you know, for better or for worse, a trick of the tail was like an accident. I mean, Genesis got lucky there. Or did they? You know, and it was an incredible album. Uh, Wind and Weathering, not so as incredible as A Trick of the Tail, but I like this album. It definitely has big moments all over it. And, uh, you know, what kind of reviews does it get? Oh, it gets a four. It gets a three. A couple of threes. But, you know, I would give this album a four. I wouldn't give it a three. And uh, there's Hackett. Oh, what a genius. Great, great, great guitar player. 11th Earl of Mar. I really like the song. Tony Banks, Hackett, and Rutherford. Um, progressive rock. Very awesome. You know, way to start out this album. Uh, Tony Banks keyboards, man. He... Is he just paints these pastiche, pastels, prog rock elegance. It's just incredible. And the lyrics are great on 11th Earl of Mar, you know, like where the little kid is like, Daddy, you know, don't, you know, he won't let them get me. You know, it's just, it's awesome. You know, you get kind of scared listening to 11th Earl of Mar. And it's, uh, just the Genesis are talking about some deep topics, uh, deep topics here. Talk it. I'm thinking about hockey, like NHL. But um, <laughs> I love the song "11th Earl Lamar." Great song. All 7:45 of it. Maybe not as good as a trick of the tail type Genesis, but it's good indeed. One for the vine. Tony Banks, man, uh, another killer song. Um. Love it, you guys. Love it. Love these songs. Um, you know, like 50,000 men were sent to do the will of one. I love uh, the lyrics of these two opening songs. Prague yet beautiful. Not too annoying Prague. Melodic, atmospheric, you know. I love Tony Banks and Everyone's on that song, you know, One for the Vine, uh, Hackett, Rutherford. It's all good. And Phil's voice, just like A Trick of the Tail, it's good here. And he almost, uh, you're almost like if you're not really a close Genesis watcher, you're still, even though this is the second album without him, you're still thinking this could be Peter Gabriel, especially on One for the Vine. Such a great song. And your own special way is where, you know, Mike Rutherford's trying to write hit songs. He's like, come on, you, you mates, you know, we got to get on the radio. 
And the, the shortened version of this, it's only three minutes, the single version of Your Own Special Way is clearly a hit song, you guys. It's right there with all the lame, horrible Phil Collins. But way, way before that, those times, this is an early Genesis hit. Although there were Genesis hits before Your Own Special Way, uh, it's a great song. It is uh, not as good as the first two. Um, you know, they're definitely trying to get on the radio. Now, on the album version, there's this long keyboard solo thing with Tony Banks that sounds really cool. It's got those keyboards, that setting almost sounds like Borderline by Madonna. Listen to that keyboard, uh, those settings. It's really beautiful. I love those keyboards that Tony Banks, the long solo, it probably removes the hit status from the song, but it makes the long version of the song that much more interesting. And you are intrigued, people, believe me. And of course, what Gorilla, the instrumental, Phil Collins and Tony Banks wrote it, but everyone plays here and it's incredible. I love what Gorilla. I love side one of this album. It's great. Now, where this album might get problematic is side two. All in a Mouse's Night sounds like Genesis from 1973 with Peter Gabriel. Uh, it really could have used Peter Gabriel narr narrating the story of the mouse versus the cat, you know. <laughs> but, you know, it's a Tony Banks song. And it's interesting, you know, it, it's a little disappointing, you know, you wish it was better, but it certainly is prog rock that is long and drawn out. You know, it's 630, 639. Uh, it's, it's very solid progressive rock. Uh, it's a little underwhelming. A lot of people will be like, you know, what is this? All in a mouse's night. But me, Clark the Shark, you know me. I love weird shit, weird lyrics, nonsense. I love it. You know, all in a mouse's night. It is the genius of Tony Banks. But probably the greatest song on this whole album, people, is Blood on the Rooftops, which is one of my favorite all-time Genesis songs. And of course, Steve Hackett uh, pretty much wrote that song. Uh, Phil Collins, you know, I guess wrote the lyrics. I don't know, maybe Hackett and him did. But the guitar is incredible on Blood on the Rooftops. Very atmospheric, just like this whole album is. Very melodic and uh, catchy, brilliant, genius. Uh, acoustic, Blood on the Rooftops. Come on, you guys. You Genesis fans, you know that song is amazing, incredible. And then as this album goes and begins to end with unquiet slumbers for the sleepers and, you know, in thy quiet earth, these instrumentals are awesome. You know, they take you back to Watt Gorilla. <laughs> and Hackett is writing people him rutherford you know banks everybody phil collins these instrumentals are really fucking killer tracks three and four uh, to me it's like one big long song it's amazing i love it and uh probably the song on the album i don't like is afterglow because you know it's another tony banks song where He's like, okay, I'll, you know, Mike Rutherford can get us on the radio, but so can I <laughs> with Afterglow. I mean, it's an all right song. To me, this is more like a Phil Collins thing live where, you know, the lasers and lights are shooting out and Phil is, he's up on a mountain with all this dry ice and concert fog and there's lights and stars up in the sky and you see Phil up there with his beard for the afterglow <laughs> you know like the dust that settles all around me and this song sounds like have yourself a merry little Christmas <laughs> it does I mean Tony Banks could be sued for afterglow you know, it's kind of a catchy, melodic little song, but 
come on, this is Genesis, you guys. You, you could do better than Afterglow. <laughs> but anyway, overall, in general, I like wind and weathering. Me, Clark the Shark, right here on the golden EIB Sharkerphone. The Wolfman Jack on crack, baby. I love me some prog rock. And, uh, you know, 1976, 77, the years of punk rock, you know, the Sex Pistols and all those bands you know, over in America, too. The punk breaking out. And Genesis were like, we don't care. We're wind and weathering. <laughs> We're making a prog album. We don't give a shit. We don't give a damn what people think of Genesis. And you know what? I'm like, you know, me, Sharky, I'd do a prog album like this, but then there'd be punk rock songs on it too. Because that's just how I am. I'm a Sharky Swiss Army knife, you know, like the Beatles' White Album. And I do whatever I want. I'll do jazz, blues, punk grunge, prog, metal, emo, you know, whatever, <laughs> country, I'll do it all. Clark the Shark certainly will, and so will Genesis, with wind and weathering. And of course, the next album, which I already reviewed, and then there were three, is an incredible album. Uh, maybe it's a little cheaper version of Genesis, you know, it's like discount Genesis or maybe diet Genesis or uh, half off Genesis or like, I don't know, Genesis at the 99 cent store buy Genesis at the Rhodium. And then there were three type Genesis. It's still good, though. Very prog, yet very commercial at the same time. This album here isn't quite that, but but if you're a fan of progressive rock, you still love Genesis, Wind and Weathering, 1976, their second album from that same year, you guys. And me too, Clark the Shark. I do enjoy this album. You know, I love Tony Banks and Mike Rutherford, and I love Steve Hackett. It's so sad that he's he was gone and this was his last album with Genesis because I always wonder right here on the Clark the Shark fabulous amazing show where were Genesis going with Steve Hackett had he not quit the band what incredible albums lay ahead in a future in a matrix in a world that is gone now forever and we shall never know I'm Clark the Shark, right here from the Golden EIB Sharkerphone, and you just got the word, the gospel, the truth, the testimony, and the only review you will ever need of Genesis, Wind and Weathering, baby, right here on the Clark the Shark Show. And I'm out, people. Peace.